This is Warren with Scale Audio, and today you are going to learn how to use the Fruity Slicer plugin in FL Studio. The Fruity Slicer is an older, outdated sampler. However, there is beauty in the simplicity, which can make it a preferred plugin to use when sampling within FL Studio. There is a more advanced and up to date sampler in FL Studio called Fruity Slice X. If you want to learn how to use that, click here or there. And although there's simplicity in the Fruity Slicer, the first time using anything can be a tad bit confusing or annoying. So today we'll cover all the options that are within the plugin so that you can efficiently use it within your workflow. Please like and subscribe and let's get started. I have the Fruity Slicer here. I'm gonna drop something into it. And I want you to know the very first thing that happened is we got this piano roll here. And this is called dumping. If we go back to Fruity Slicer, we're gonna see this auto dump option. And what this can do when it's on is I'm gonna change this so that there's less clips. You'll see that it changed in the back. It auto dumped to the piano roll. So, do that. What we wanna do is we wanna turn this off because what's gonna happen is you're gonna go. You're gonna decide, huh, I like that. This is gonna be on. You're gonna decide, I want a little more slices to play with. We got a slice added and all of a sudden, what you just put on the piano roll is gone. <clears throat> so I generally always leave this off. Now, starting from the top left and going down. We have an open sliced groove beats option. Now, groove beats or .zgr come from Beat Creator or Beat Slicer, which are older plugins. I'm not sure if they were native to FL Studio or if they're third party, but from what I understand, they were before FL Studio 7. So they're old. So we don't need to worry about this section or these because from my understanding, you can't even create these files. Maybe if you have some to open, that would be cool, but you don't need them. Wave files will hold these slices for you. If you create slices in something like Edison, you can save it, load your thing up in a sampler, and your slices will be there. Now, jumping from that to the next option, we have sample. Here we can load sample, right? I can load any of these, or we can save original sample or save process sample. Save original sample is going to save the sample with no slices. Save process sample will save it with all of this slice information like I just previously talked about. Next option we have is our slicing options. We can do dull auto slicing, which this one didn't catch anything. This is generally based off of transients, which is spikes. So if I did a drum loop, for example, dull auto slicing would give us quite a few. I could do medium auto slicing. In which case you'll see now we have a whole bunch or sharp auto slicing, which is gonna give us a lot. I generally stick to dull or I go by beats. So our sample we loaded in is 135 BPM and it got it right up here at 135 BPM. This is not always correct, but you wanna match the BPM of your sample in here. Otherwise, when you go to do beat slicing or half beat, third, quarter, sixth, Whatever you choose, it's not gonna be on time. Our next option here is gonna be zero cross check slices. If I click that, you'll notice some of these shifted a little bit. And what this is doing is waves cross a center line. They go up and above them when you got sound waves. Above, you're pushing out. So the speaker cones, they go back and forth. You're putting positive pressure below you're pulling back or creating a suction or a vacuum and creating negative pressure. Now, what zero crossing does is as this cone is moving forward and backwards, it's going to take it at the very center and it's going to create your slices at that center point. And what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that every single time you play a sound, you're not going to be skipping back and forth, which creates clicks and pops and is bad for your hardware. So next we have open in Edison. Edison is an audio editor. And here we can make edits to 
take our sample, drag it, and drop it back into our sampler. I don't want to do that though, because I don't want it to reslice, so I'll just drop it somewhere else. After that, we have stretching methods. So fill gaps and alternate fill gaps are hold beat slicer algorithms, which is why they are not selectable now. Pro default is made for use on a wide range of audio signals to try and kind of averagely preserve things. Pro transient is great for something like drums because transients help define sounds very often. And pro transient will help to try and make sure that when stretching that they preserve that transient. Transient is going to be the same thing as pro transient, but with less CPU usage. Tonal is going to have a very strong focus on the tones or the notes that are being used, um, the tonality overall. And this would be something great if you were trying to use chords and preserve chords or just the overall feeling of a sound. Monophonic is for individual notes and works great with someone singing, for example. And then speech will be for somebody talking and just for speech in general. Uh, if it's singing, though, you'd want to use monophonic. And these options are for the algorithm used for stretching sounds via the stretch option. Next, we have spectrum. So a spectral view is going to give us a view of frequency content over a period of time. So left to right is going to be our period of time. Bottom to top is going to be our frequency range. So as we can see, this all mainly lives in lower frequencies. And if we listen, you can tell that there's a lot of more low frequency content than there is high. The next option we have is to dump the beat to the piano roll. And this gives us some interesting stuff. We can do normal. We can do reverse, which does the same thing as normal, but in reverse and not reversing the sound, just the way it dumped to the piano roll. So we'll start here and work down now. We also have random. And these can be great things to get a creative idea if you don't know what to do. We've got flatten, which is just going to give us literally just the groove of the notes and the cuts. So it'll do the same thing here all the way across, but it's not going to change the notes. It's just going to give us where all those slices are on the timing of the piano roll. Right? One on every beat because that's what we cut it to. Next, we have shift up. And what shift up is going to do is it's going to start us on this last one and start going across. So we'll play it. Next, we have shift down, which will do the opposite. Now, instead of starting here, we're going to start here. We then have quantize, which if these weren't already on time, it would slap our cuts on time. But since they're already on time, we won't notice a difference. Then we have swing, which should give it a little bit of swing. So next we've got accentuate beat, which is going to give a higher velocity to the first note of every single beat. We've got pitch up beat. Which as you can tell, pitched it up. Next we have widened stereo. And widened stereo is just gonna do some panning effects. So if you have headphones, you should have heard that jumping back and forth, left to right. If you don't have headphones, you still might have been able to hear it or at least heard a little bit of width and placement. Next, we have crazy, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 
After that, we have stutter half. Self-explanatory, stutter fourth. Or original length, which is what is auto-dumped into the piano roll whenever you have this auto-dump on. So if we take a look underneath these options, we have an auto-fit. And as you can see in the top left, it says fit beat to project tempo right after loading. And I've played with this quite a few times. And honestly, I've never noticed a difference with this option on. So if anybody has answers for what exactly this actually does, I would love to hear it. D-click actually just adds a quick fade to help get rid of clicking. If you notice, we still have a little bit of click coming into these so uh, coming into these sounds. So I can add a little bit of an attack at the beginning of each of these with our attack and descent knobs. If you don't know what the attack knob does, I'll move it way higher and you'll hear. It makes the beginning come in slower or more abruptly. So we'll just get it moved forward a little bit. Our descent knob, you'll see that tail there just switched drastically. We'll reset that. So time stretch. This is gonna be able to just stretch or shorten a sample so that it fits a specific amount of time. If I move it drastically, that went really quick. If I move it really long, right? But what we also have is our pitch shift. Now the cool thing about this pitch shift is if you'll notice, <clears throat> it did not change the time of our samples. In the bottom left, we have this animate button and this literally just turns off the little lights down here as it plays. I turn it off, nothing on. We got Christmas lights again. Play to end, that just means that if I play a note and hold it, it'll play past the slice. So if I play this beginning one, versus not playing to the end. In our auto slicing, we have this low and high. The way I generally do this for auto slicing, because I want less slices, so I'll turn the high down. And the low, I'll just start turning up until it gives me about what I want. And if I can't get everything I want with low, I'll get it till I just have everything that I want just about. And then I'll start turning the high up and see if that does it for me. Doesn't always work, but we're the shot, right? So now that we've talked about it not really working, how do we get around it? Well, if you come up in here, you can right click wherever you want and click split slice. And now we've added a slice between these two. And to choose the one you wanna slice up, you just have to go through, click it, right click, split slice or you can right click remove slice and which will take away what we just did. Another option is to copy up to audio clipboard. And basically what you can do is I can take this and drag it as a sample on its own, for example, into another sampler or into the playlist uh, or just copy paste. If I was to paste audio, it'd be in something like Edison or slice X, in which case I'd still probably just drag it. Next option is our wonderful reverse option, right? 
Sweet and Shimple. We also have slice names. We can name these if we want. So for example, if we end up with a drum loop and we want to name the different, the different toms and hi-hats used on the drum loop, we can do that. And then when we save that data later with the slices, the names will be saved as well. And that's a good way to create your own drum kits. Next, we have the trigger note. So D sharp five. So if I come onto my keyboard and I go to D sharp five, that's what gets played. Over here, C sharp. Right? And you can actually click and change these. And so, I believe that just about covers it. Looking at the Fruity Slicer, we have a load or save beat groove option that doesn't matter to us. We've got load or save for samples, that does. We've got slicing options, as well as options for dumping to the piano roll in creative ways. We also have BPM, pitch shifting, time shifting, attack, descent, declicking, zero crossing, and sample manipulation like reversing, etc. Simple little tool, powerful options, and I hope that that's valuable. If you liked this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and Adios.